Hare Krishna. Question, how can we overcome our ego? We all know that we have the ego, but how do we go about overcoming it? Answer, I am also struggling, I have a huge ego. So, I cannot give an authoritative answer from any realization of my own. But based on what I have heard from Guru Sadhu Shastra, I can speak a few things. Our process of bhakti is not about giving up ego. It is about giving up false ego. False ego is to think that at one level it means to, for the soul to misidentify with the body. Uh, but at a deeper level, you know, we have to consider what is the effect of that misidentification. Now our bodily misidentification makes us think that actually I am a material creature and that material things will give me happiness and largely our body misidentification gives us a prithakabhav, gives us a sense of existence independent of God and that is a primary problem. So uh, when we have true ego, true ego means we understand that I am a soul and as a soul I am a part of Krishna. So we have <coughs> Yamunachari in the Stotratna, he says that Bhavantam eva nucharam nirantara prashanta nihishesha mano rathantara kadah maikantika nitya kinkaraha praharishi shami sanatha jivitam So he says that ever since I have fixed my mind on you my lord Bhavantam eva nucharam nirantara Steadily I have fixed my mind on you Prashanta nihishesha mano rathantara and my mind has become peaceful. The mind is just like on a chariot running here and there. It has become peaceful, prashant. And now, does that mean that I am going to live a life which is passive forever? No. My aspiration is kadaha maikanti kanitya kinkaraha. When will I accept that I am your eternal servant? Aikanti, a pure eternal servant. And praharshishami sanatha jivitam. And praharshishami. I will delight in the fact. What is the fact? Sanatha Jeevitam That now I am no longer a Nath, no longer do I have no master. I have the supreme, the best master, the best Nath. Jagannath. He is, he is our eternal protector, eternal lord, uh, eternal my guide, greatest well-wisher. So when will I delight in the fact that I have such a wonderful master? When this world, when say, a child is home, uh, homeless, is an orphan, and then the child is going from uh, maybe uh, one orphanage to another, and sometimes there are um, some proposals for adoption, but then nothing works out. The family that wants to adopt doesn't turn out to be good. But finally, that child comes to a uh, comes to a family, uh, comes to a, which is very loving, very care, and true, very caring, and and showers this child with affection and helps it provide all facility for the child to grow into a wonderful human being. Then that child will be grateful, you know, what kind of life I was living earlier and the, uh, this family has adopted me. So that, that will be the joy of that child. Sanatha Jeevitam. So it's all for, all for that matter, somebody has been repeatedly unemployed and then occasionally that person gets a job but the bosses are very exploitative. And then finally one gets a, a, a kind boss who pays well and who also is concerned about the growth of the employee and the security of the employee and they feel, oh this is such a good job, I'm grateful, good boss, I'm grateful for this. So like that, Krishna is not just our uh, Natha, he is not just our boss, he is also our father. And we have been trying out, trying out various things to do to be secure and happy in life. But when we come to Krishna, then we get true happiness, true security. So, the, so, rather than worrying too much about giving up false ego, as devotees we focus on cultivating the true ego. Cultivating the true ego means uh, re strengthening our connection with Krishna. Uh, reminding ourselves that you know, Krishna is such a wonderful Lord and I am so fortunate to be connected with Him. And of course, our relationship with Him is of service. But if we focus too much, I am a servant, I am a servant, I am a servant, and the word servant has a uh, jarring, uh, jarring, grating 
tone to it which will which may create some resentment within us and certainly we do have to change the disposition from that of a independent enjoyer to a <coughs> servant of the lord but that doesn't have to be necessarily done in a way which causes excessive friction in our consciousness so we can focus on the fact that that we have got such a wonderful lord that krishna is our lord and he is uh, is there to take care of us and we are uh, we are in his shelter so focusing on that bhakti nath thakur also says in a konabuji song that paramanand nachi pad guna gaiya that paramanand nachi i will dance in great ecstasy and pad guna gaiya i will sing the glories of the lotus feet of the lord which have given me shelter so as devotees if we focus more on the point that i am so fortunate to have such a wonderful lord and we cultivate the development of the true ego development of the true ego means you know we feel that we cannot live without a sense of pride and sometimes we think of the word pride in a very negative sense so in a more positive sense we could use the word honor now we all need a sense of belonging of acceptance of value of of being valued and being valuable so that of we could say self worth now if that comes independent of krishna that is false ego and that causes illusion and bondage so rather than trying to say no to the false ego we focus on saying yes to the true ego that means we focus on remembering how glorious krishna is how fortunate we are to have a connection with him and then we cherish the ways in which we can develop our connection with krishna so if we have some talents by which we can do some services if we have some resources uh, if we have wealth we have position whatever we have we use them with the focus on developing our relationship with krishna not the focus on trying to prove to the world how great i am so this is a matter of subtle but significantly different motivation just as a materialistic person wants to wants everyone to know how great i am a devotee wants to know how great wants the world to know how great krishna is and just as a materialistic person may uh, do a lot of activities a devotee also runs around doing a lot of activities but the motivation is different and so uh, so rather than trying to beat ourselves down by think i am servant i am a servant i shouldn't have ego i shouldn't have ego if you focus on you know how can i develop my true ego you know i have such i'm so fortunate to have a wonderful connection with krishna and let me delight in that connection and let me share that delightful connection with others in whatever way i can and when uh, now when we are trying to develop this true ego we can also observe what are the occasions when our false ego manifests you know for example when we have some talent and we are able to do some thing very well that is the time we may want we may become proud oh i am doing this so well then if that is the case then we can do two three things first is uh, try to remind ourselves that uh, this talent is not mine it comes from krishna and he can take it away at any moment just as arjuna was such a formidable archer but at one particular time towards the end of his manifest past times he could not even defeat some cowards who came to plunder krishna's queens so you know if arjuna who was the world's foremost archer had his abilities taken away by krishna my abilities can also be taken away so my abilities are gifts given by krishna they are interested to me and let me use them in krishna's service so by remembering that these abilities belong to krishna they are gifts from krishna we can avoid the pride coming from abilities but at the same time knowing that they they are there with us we can use them in krishna's service and also our pride may come up when somebody disagree, our ego may manifest when somebody disagrees with us and now it's possible that we may be right and that person may be wrong uh, and it's also possible that that person may be right and we may be wrong but it's possible that as is most common you know both have some some right and some wrong so the egoistic responsibility to try to uh, try to taunt the other person or crush the other person go to the other person but uh, the at that time we can think uh, rather than thinking oh this person is wrong and this i am right we can focus on now uh, how would krishna want me to behave in this situation uh, my goal is not to prove that i am right but my goal is to please krishna 
my goal is to develop my relationship with Krishna. So then that thought that how can I serve Krishna in this situation, that will protect us from responding egoistically. So we can think of that this situation, every interaction for us, you know, how that person is behaving, uh, that person, whoever it is, that person, even if it's a close relative, that person is going to be there in our life for 30, 50, 70, 80 years. And if I get worked up, if I get angry with that person, okay, I have a relationship with this person, but it's not an eternal relationship. But my relationship with Krishna is eternal. So if I let my response be determined only by the way this person is behaving, then in my response, I lose the opportunity to develop my eternal relationship with Krishna. Just like you know, if in a cloth shop, there is an employee who is showing clothes to the customers and there is the owner who is watching from uh, the counter. So um, from, um, now some employee, some customers may be very demanding, you know, say if it's a cloth shop. Some women may come and they may say, I want to see this cloth and I want to see this sari and I want to see this and I want to see Let me see 12, let me see 50, 50 clothes and they may not take anyone. Now the, 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 when the employee may can get irritated, but if the employee knows that, okay, my, my boss is watching and my salary is not going to come from this customer, my salary is going to come from my boss. So if I, although this customer may be irritable, but if I behave cordially, then my boss is going to be pleased and my boss pleasure is what is most important for me i'll try to please this customer as much as possible but even if i can't if my boss is pleased with my conduct i am secure similarly you know, the person with whom we are interacting that person is like the customer and krishna is our boss krishna is present right in our heart and he's constantly observing what we do so uh, if we are driven by the ego then our response will be determined just this person is being so irritable, so I will shout it. I will show this person, you know, how uh, how wrong he or she is. But if we are connected with Krishna, then we will think, okay, what what will please Krishna at this situation? And then it's not that it's just not having an ego means we let other people trample us, that we let them do whatever they want. No, we have to do what is best for the service of Krishna. And sometimes we may have to speak firmly, strong, assertively. So that can also be done in a mood of humility, in a mood of service to Krishna. So basically, the things that make us irritated, the, the, the things that we become proud of and the things that make us uh, blast at others, shout at others and other situations like this, when our ego starts getting exhibited, we can try to come up with mature Krishna conscious responses based on seeing even these situations as opportunities for developing our true ego, not just for uh, defeating or crushing our false ego. So when we have that positive motivation, uh, then uh, the process of bhakti becomes joyful. It doesn't become a process of beating ourselves down, but a process of raising ourselves up so that we connect with Krishna. And in this way, gradually, by, by keeping Krishna the center, the process of purification, although there is definitely some level of pain when our false ego is crushed, but there is also a great level of joy as our true ego is developed in the sense of our relationship with Krishna is developed and in that we great, get greater shelter and security which will last for us eternally. Thank you.